Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this video is a look at how the operating system works on a Microsoft Windows operating system machine, uh, different tools and interfaces that you can use to see what's going on with your computer and help you be more informed about what's on it. So we're going to look at four things. We're going to take a look at the computer system information, the control panel, the comp computer management panel, and the task manager. Now, users who have a Mac or Linux operating system instead will have some sort of comparable services and information interfaces available on their computers. We're going to have to look at it, but I'm working on a Windows machine, and that's what this video is concentrating on. But I hope that many of the concepts will be transferable regardless of what operating system you're using. But for here, in the Windows system, we're going to take a look at a few things. First off, this is the operating system desktop here. You have a recycle bin, which you can actually look and see what's inside of it. These are a whole bunch of files that have been deleted. You can go ahead and you can delete those files as well. Um, there's also a taskbar of some kind, usually on the Mac and probably Linux as well, where you can have icons that are shortcuts to your favorite applications, the ones you use most often, and often even some little areas that will give you some quick information like other programs that are open, whether you are a secure, you have a security protection tool, various things like my internet access, etc., usually a date and time, that sort of thing. On the lower left-hand corner is the Start button, which is essentially opens the start area of my operating system. I have it set up with a nice menu on the side, but this is going to be entirely personalized per, per person, depending on what happens when you take your computer out of the box, you boot it up for the first time, and your operating system finishes its setup based on different criteria that you give it at that time. This is what I did, but there's also the very handy search area here, and that's what I will use to look for things. So let's look at the system information first. System information, oh, there we are. I'm gonna open this up, and this will give me a tool that lets me see a system summary of different things in here. So my main system summary tells us that I'm on what, what operating system I'm using. It says what kind of uh, central processing unit that I have. It indicates what BIOS I have. This is an Alienware computer. Let's see what else it has down here. Down here, installed physical memory is basically the same thing as the RAM. So I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now I don't see anything about my graphics processing unit in here, but let's see what else we've got here. Components, display. This will give a summary of the display, which happens to be the video card here. I'm going to tell a little bit about that. Let's see if it give what information it gives. So it has one gigabytes of adapter RAM. There's actually additional RAM, but I'm not seeing it listed here. But it still gives me a lot of information there. You could use this to look at information about your modem or other things if there is information to be had. So that's what the system information is about. Next, we're going to take a look at the control panel, which is a really handy tool for finding all sorts of operating system tools and apps and utilities in it. Control panel. The control panel offers you sort of an address bar so you can see breadcrumbs of wherever you go in this. It also has a search bar in the upper right hand side. So if I wanted to search for troubleshooting in here, I could try that troubleshooting and it would give me a chance to do some troubleshooting on my system. If I don't want that, then I will come back here to the home page. The home page can be set up by category, by large icons, by small icons. I'll go ahead and stick with category. 
And this is, you know, broken down into things like system and security. The system and security, look at all these different things that you can look at here. You could take a look at um, co troubleshooting common problems from here. You can look at your current computer status. You can look at the RAM and processing speed you have, etc. You have other things that you can look down in here too. Your user accounts, programs, so you can uninstall a program if you don't want one anymore. In fact, let's take a look at that. Say you have, like a lot of people, games and other forms of media and apps that you've tried out and you just sort of left them on your computer because you have a huge hard drive. Over time, your hard drive does start to fill up. And a lot of times, having a bunch of apps and things you no longer use and don't need, getting rid of those can help you out. You want to be very, very careful of this, though, because you don't want to get rid of anything that is part of, say, a package like Adobe Creative Cloud. Anything Acrobat and Adobe oriented will be part of that. Alienware has to do with the type of computer this is. Intel has things that are about the physicality of the computer. Anything Microsoft oriented has to do with the operating system and maybe even the uh, if you have Microsoft Office and things that are related to those uh, productivity tools. NVIDIA has stuff to do with the uh, graphics processing unit. So there's a lot of things like that you don't get rid of. If you don't know what it is, don't get rid of it. But if you recognize like, oh, this is an app that I no longer use, like Zoom, you can right click in it on it and you can uninstall. And then you can always decide to reinstall it if, if you um, realize you made a mistake. Let's take a look at the task manager task manager the task manager is a really useful tool because then you could open it up through the control panel because this allows you to get sort of a an idea of the types of processes your computer is running and how much of the cpu and memory it's using so for instance if you come up here to memory and you hover over the header there's a little drop down arrow there well, a little arrow and you can look at things from what's using the most right now the wind the desktop window manager that's opening these different windows for us to look at in here is using the most memory microsoft word i have a couple of documents open camtasia studio that i'm using for recording and same thing with the cpu we can take a look at what the most use is Performance is a bit more of a graphic look at things. You can take a look at your CPU in the moment and see whether it's peaking or leveling off. Same thing with the memory, your RAM. You can take a look at your disk. So for instance, if you are saving a big file, that means a lot of stuff would be being written to your hard drive and you would see a lot of peaks and valleys in here. Same thing with Wi-Fi. If you are uploading or download files, you might see more going on here. Or if there are little glitches happening in your internet connection. Uh, startup. Startup has to do with the things that start when your computer first boots up. Anything that's enabled means that your computer has to add it to its startup process. And in this case, it has to do with the graphics of the uh, you know, computer and the audio so that I can immediately use my microphone and hear things. And then this has to do with where my files are stored um, in the cloud and my uh, virus protection. All of these other things will run as needed. They simply won't run as soon as the computer starts. So don't worry when you see these that if they're disabled, that that means they don't work anymore. It simply means that they won't be enabled as soon as I start up the computer. I can always change my mind and right click on it and hit enable, or I could change my mind, right click on it and choose disable. So that's what that does. Services has to do with all these little, little apps and programs and code that has to run in the background to make the processes work. The processes being all the different files and applications that you've got open in your operating system to make things work. But the services are often various things they need to connect with the internet, to ping with the manufacturer of equipment, and so on. 
So most of these, you'll actually see a large number of them that are running. And you don't ever want to play with these until you're really, really proficient at computer management and understand what these different services do. There are a lot of them that aren't running, they're stopped. And this also will tend to mean that they will simply start when needed. Whereas all of these other ones are running now because they're needed for all the different things I'm doing on the computer at the moment. So that's how the uh, task manager works. Finally, let's take a quick look at the computer management panel. Well, actually, let's see if there's anything else we want to take a look at here back in the control panel. I think that will do that for now. So we're going to close the control panel and we will look at the computer management panel. Okay, that's okay. So we're looking for the management and I call it the panel because it opens up like a panel. But in here, you can also get a little bit more information about stuff. So for instance, one area that interests me is the performance monitor. The performance monitor just gives a look at what your computer is doing at any given time. And again, this is probably for more you know, skilled users than even I am but it can give you an idea of what's happening here. You can also take a look at the device manager. The device manager basically is a list of all the different equipment and chips and stuff that are in here. So for instance, I could come in here and take a look at display adapters and um, there's both an onboard one and then there's the GE Force uh, NVIDIA and I could right click on this to check the properties. Now let's see what we've got for Mm, disk management. Disk management has to do with your hard drive. So many people have only one hard drive. It could be a um, solid state drive or it could be a, a SATA drive where you can um, basically, it, it's just not as efficient as a solid state drive, but it holds tons and tons of info and it's what you know, used to be routinely available to everyone before you could get a solid state drive. And a lot of times people will have a computer with two drives. So I have the solid state drive, which is really better and faster and more compact for uh, running your operating system and a lot of your main applications. But then the other drive would be good for keeping all of your files like music, movies, um, your work products, etc., and maybe even running your games from that one. But in this case, there's one drive on this computer and I can click on it and see that it's, you know, how it's, it's a healthy drive at this point, thankfully, it has one partition. And then I'm going to right click and I can check properties and the properties will give me a chance to see visually how the drive looks in terms of available space. So the blue is the used space and then I have almost as much available space that's not being used. That's pretty cool. You can also come in here and do a disk cleanup, which will be something that can be done as part of troubleshooting and other stuff. But right now it's calculating how much space I'd be able to save. And then it will give me a readout here of different things I could check or uncheck in order to make available 4.38 gigabytes of space, including, let's see what's here, the temporary files. There's Oh, excuse me, the recycle bin. There's 2.45 gigabytes of, uh, of files in there. I'm not going to do anything there. I just wanted to show you what this looked like. So anyway, that gives you a overview of some of the interfaces you can use with your operating system to acquire information that you might need. So thanks very much. Have a great day.